Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast alongside L.L. Escobedo. I'm Chris Larson. Today we're talking about buying a fish house and all the other stuff that you're going to need. Because if you just buy a fish house, you're not going to be able to do much else. Well, you'll look really good sitting in it. (laughs) (laughs) And a lot of it depends on what you buy, too. I mean, if you've got houses out there, you can just get the shell. And then you got to put all the cool stuff in there. There's other ones that you can buy uh, kind of the whole RV package type of thing. And you have everything in, in everything you could ever dream of in the house. But uh, we're going to just kind of talk general stuff and just assume that your house is kind of ready to at least fish and get out on the lake and um, just everything else that you'll need. Well, if you're one of my buddies, it's really not going to take a whole lot. You need a case of beer some snacks (laughs) i mean the fishing's a bonus i guess i I got a couple buddies that'll show up without even bringing a rod (laughs) (laughs) and they're not alone (laughs) if you if you go out on the lax or or any other destination lake you'll certainly find those guys out there as well that uh they're there for the party and uh, god bless them but uh i guess one of the things and probably the thing that the big ticket item is a generator you know these things are great but if you don't have any power and you're out in the lake you're not gonna be able to watch tv uh you know you can run the lights off the battery this house with the battery that's in it um i can actually run the furnace and just the lights in here for almost a day on just the battery and i know there's guys out there that maybe have newer batteries or newer houses that can go longer than that but uh if you want to be able to watch tv or maybe even some of the houses got uh, microwaves and stuff like that in it you're going to need a generator well even just going back to the simple fact that y- your battery will run for a day for you if you absolutely need it but it's always nice i mean we're talking ice fishing season so it's it's not like you're if your heater goes out you know obviously propane is one thing you always want to make sure you have plenty of propane with you but a lot of these houses do use electricity to make that furnace actually work um and if your battery dies and it's negative 10 degrees outside you need a backup plan of some sort the generator comes in handy um i would even go as far as to say maybe just keep an extra buddy heater packed away in your pickup or something like that for that situation but uh, i'm personally always one of those guys that over packs and is over prepared just in case that sort of thing happens but without electricity it won't be real fun sitting in your ice shack in the dark with no heat or anything like that going on so right yeah i mean i can i can go about 24 hours with it but uh yeah we, basically the way i kind of operate is i'll i don't like to have that generator on all the time especially yep. when i'm fishing but uh i try to turn it on for maybe two or three hours maybe every four or five hours just to turn on the tv for a little bit get the batteries charged in the house so that i've always got because i don't like to run the generator at night because when it dies and i got to go out in the middle of the night and fill it up and move it and whatever so i like to have that battery good and charged up for uh when it's time to go to bed and then you can and really what i'll do is i'll bring the generator right in either in the house um you're going to want to make sure that it's off for a while before you do that because there's still going to be some residual uh exhaust coming out of that thing but uh or else just put it in the back of the truck just get it out of the out of the weather while it sits overnight but uh it's nice to um be able to not listen to that generator drone on all night long so keep that battery fresh throughout the day and speaking of uh exhaust in the house and other things the other thing you're going to want to buy and this house is equipped with a carbon monoxide uh, detector inside but uh it's not a bad idea to have an extra one along uh it's just a big safety thing exactly um even you know carbon monoxide detectors is a huge thing but even you could go if you're going to be cooking and running the heater a smoke detector wouldn't be a bad idea to have um all your key safety features i mean um uh, smoke detector fire extinguisher um just your standard safety first aid type things those are some of the more easily forgotten but it's you know really you don't use them a whole lot but they're they're something you definitely have to have because safety is definitely the most important thing i mean we we all read about it at least once a winter that someone that didn't have a have a a carbon monoxide detector had their something happen with their heater and uh they ended up in the hospital or or worse so i mean that's a pretty cheap easy fix to to keep your life you know stay safe 
Yeah, and the other thing I do, and it's, um, you know, this is kind of commercial for catch cover, but I, you know, usually we'll have a couple of holes open anyway with lines down, and that kind of gives you a little extra ventilation, but even if I'm not gonna do that, you know, there's, there's nights where I'd rather not wake up to the rattle rail. <laughs> even if I'm not gonna do that, what I'll do is I'll just pop a hole open and I'll put our catch cover safety cover in there, cover it, but I've always got that ventilation going down and it, it keeps the house, and I, I like it, you know, about 60 degrees when I sleep anyway. I sleep better at that temperature, so it, it, it keeps the house in, in that nice temperature and, I, and I've got that ventilation so that if there is a problem, usually, you know, at, in, carbon monoxide typically likes to stay low so yep. it, it will it'll vent out so it's a it's a good good thing to do and it's just again one of the the many catch cover products and one of the many uses for it uh you know that safety cover is a great thing to keep the dogs and the kids and everything else from falling down the hole but uh it, it actually is a it's a good thing to have at night just to be able to keep one of those holes open for ventilation what else Al? what else do we need there's so many different things. I mean, to since you're on the topic and, and with the catch cover stuff, um, I mean, really they're the one-stop shop for just about everything you need to kind of get, start getting your, your shack rigged. Obviously there's a lot of different personalized things that you're gonna do, but when it comes to the fishing portion and, and standard accessories, your hole covers, your cup holders, your rod holders, they have pretty much every product that you would could possibly need for fishing out of a, a, a hard-sided house i mean they got re they got the the rattle reels that you were talking about but those are things that you can kind of add as you kind of kind of start to use it use your house and and make it more functional functional to your style of fishing or how you're going to use the house but uh, just keep in mind catch cover is a great place to find all those different accessories that you need for for your house um now that uh, to get off, off that one i mean when you're talking about you know setting your up more for just your general use uh, you, when you first get your house you're, you're you're thinking about the things a lot of things that people forget are you know an obvious one pillows and blankets um it's a lot easier if you have a de designated set for in the house. You have a, a spot to store it, a spot to keep it, so it's always ready to go when you're ready to go. I mean, obviously, you're going to take it, your case, pillowcases and blankets and wash them as, as often as you'd like, but it's nice to have that separate set ready to go so you're not always taking them in and out of the house, those sorts of things. And the same thing goes with the cookware. If you got a, a shack that comes with, like this one we're sitting in, has a stove, um, you will have having extra pans, extra cookware, your regular, I mean, scaled down amenities of home. I mean, that's really the purpose of buying the shack is so you can fish comfortably and have some of those amenities of, of being at home and being comfortable. Well, you just gotta have a, a scaled down version of those comforts mm -hmm. with you all the time. Um, on top of that, I mean, if you don't have running water, jugs of water for washing your dishes, a five gallon bucket, maybe a toilet seat for that five gallon bucket. Um, there's just a lot of little things that often get overlooked. And trust me, if, if anything we mention here today, you forget about it, you'll you'll think of whatever you need because everyone's a little bit different too um like me personally i always set up a portable shack that's my external bathroom mm -hmm. um i have five gallon bucket with a toilet seat top on it um that portable heater does wonders in there too exactly <laughs> Keep that in there so when you go in there, you've got a nice warm to, warm uh, place to sit yep. when, when you're out there. Um, but yeah, paper towels, you know, the other thing that, that a lot of people don't think about is stuff to clean with. So, uh, you know, bring a, a couple sponges or washcloths, some dish soap. Uh, you're going to want to have that in the house, but also, you know, your, your salt and pepper and whatever your favorite seasoning is for, you know, we cook a lot of pizzas out here and I like the little seasoning on top of there. So whatever those things are that you really like, paper plates, you'll need tons of those. Um, but probably, you know, one of the things we're starting talking about these things is, uh, is trash. We want to make sure that we, we've got a, 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 something to deal with trash. And so we've always got extra, extra garbage bags and, um, we'll throw that in the truck when we're done and the nice thing about ice fishing is, is it's cold outside so that trash doesn't typically get real smelly so there's really no excuse for leaving your trash out on the ice it, it 
you know it's just not a good thing for anybody so you know put it in a trash bag and then put that in your truck when it's done and usually it's nice and cold outside it, everything freezes up in there real nice and you can get it home without having any kind of issues with you know getting stuff all over making the back of your truck smell yeah yeah and that's it's something i mean it's everyone everyone knows better and it's it's something that only takes a couple minutes just make sure when you leave your spot it looks better than when you left i mean there's nothing worse for the image of fishermen or ice fishermen there's a pile of garbage sitting in the middle of the lake when it washes up on the landowner's shore they just hate us that much more so yeah keep that stuff clean um you know one of the other things and we were talking fishing rattle reels and all that stuff the other cool thing that that i like and that's kind of how you can see it all over this house is you know we've got the the new catch cover tackle box tray in here and that's a good one of the things that i can't stand even in the summertime is when you're out fishing and you, you can't find what you need right away so i always have like the things that i use all the time out i've always got you know a needle nose or whatever that you like to use to to get the fish off the hook in two different places on the house so i can always grab it um and i like to have kind of my favorite lures and the things that i use a lot always in a spot that i can always grab it um so those shelf units are really nice the tackle box tray is really nice the other thing i'll say is is the pucks that they use for for the cup holders and the rattle reels those are cheap you know make sure you have them all over the house and all the different places that you'd want to use them so you can get your rod holder in whatever hole you want to use you can get your rattle reel in whatever hole you want to use you can put a cup holder wherever you want it um, the other thing that i'll say and it's something that you know i see some pushback on from a lot of people um, if they they're old school guys and they've been using gas or propane augers uh, once you use an electric auger and something like this you'll never want to use a gas or propane it's auger again definitely nice to be able to pull up and drill those holes and not have to wait a half hour with the door open losing all your heat you know trying to get rid of some of that exhaust and and even then it still stinks for hours when you get out get right. in there yeah everybody went to propane i don't know you know maybe 10 years ago they said this is this is great compared to gas it was but uh once you start drilling holes with electric you won't want to go back and when you've got you know, a lot of guys, if they fish Lake of the Woods or those places where maybe you're fishing 30 inches of ice on a regular basis, they go, ah, you know, I like to have this propane because I can always, you know, refuel on the ice. Well, when you got a house and you've got your, your generator and everything running, you've always got power. Yep. So I, I think electric auger, if you go with a drill adaptive or if you go with something like an ion, I mean, you're just it's just so much nicer in houses like this so just consider uh making that investment when you buy a fish house as well definitely that is that is one, another one that gets overlooked um but i'm going to take a step back even further yet okay um we're talking about you just bought your your house you're getting it all geared up the one thing to think about as well is what do you need to get this thing from the lake to the house or if you have a problem um Put yourself together a little travel tote you know just keep in the back of your pickup or somewhere in the shack when you're traveling have a, a few tools screwdrivers a socket set um, a grease gun um, just some of the the more common tools that you would use that if for some reason you have so any sort of issue that you can easily fix it you know just having a tote like that along can can solve a lot of headaches for you um, and it and to me i mean when you're traveling and, and and towing a long distance you want to make it as easy as possible if you run into an issue to, to solve that problem instead of having to drive, unhook the shack drive to town go buy a couple tools come back hook up find out you bought the wrong sockets you needed you needed standard and not metric or blah 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 and you know when you start getting up to like your red lakes or lake of the woods there's not a whole lot of places up right. there anyways now you're knocking on ice shack doors looking hey do you got this wrench so i can fix my heater this thing broke um i always say you know as far as that goes i have a tote like i said with my tools it's gonna have i have a jump box a battery jump box for the vehicle i, I charge that every time before i go out socket set a miscellaneous mix of screwdrivers miscellaneous sets of pliers um and, that, and really that's all I have for tools I mean then I always have a multi-tool or a knife in the tackle box but uh, 
the other things you know you can add on the top of that box is is just like your winter safety kit that you keep in your car extra blanket you know flares just simple safety things like that that you wouldn't really think of using but if you have them and you need them it's it's a great thing to have yeah the other thing that i'll tell you that i that i always throw in the truck when i'm out pulling uh, the trailer really whenever i take a long trip even in the summertime um i've got a, a jack that's about i don't know two feet long it's not not the size of a floor jack but definitely uh a lot better than what you'll find in the in the back of your your vehicle and that thing will come in in handy big time especially you know trying to use those little scissor jacks that you get in your car in the winter time is not a lot of fun so uh those things and, and i've actually used it a few times and, and having that with is just so much easier than than messing around with those little scissor jacks well and it's and it's not just for the purpose of changing tires and stuff like that sometimes you need a little bit of help you get a little bit of rain on the ice and you need to break loose i mean obviously when you start getting into the the higher the i won't say higher quality but when you start getting into the to the drop down style with the the winches and stuff like that there's there's um there's assistance that helps you break it up but sometimes you might need that little bit of extra and a floor jack and a two by four can work wonders just to, to get that crack ice around the edge of the shack um and i actually i have a full size jack that i carry so i yeah. i do the same thing too them them jacks that come in your vehicles they, they work wonders when you absolutely need it and you're in a pickle but just like anything else in life the easier you can make it on yourself the more more enjoyment you're going to get out of it you know it, the faster you change that flat tire or or break the shack free the faster your your blood pressure can start to come back down <laughs> right. and the other thing and you talked about you know getting your house out of the ice you know having a shovel along is really nice to have um some guys will carry snow shovels i use just kind of like a, a square edge shovels when i bring along um and bring in some blocks i've got blocks in the house just to be able to set the house down on blocks instead of setting it down directly on the ice and with those blocks you don't want to leave those on the ice if somebody comes along after it snows and they you know their auger hits that wood it could really cause some problems for them but you know also you just don't want you know blocks of wood floating around in the lake later on either so i i actually have a 30 ounce hammer it's not quite the size of a big mall but it's bigger than your typical household hammer hammer so i can knock those blocks out when i'm done so having the blocks are gonna help you out with that and so typically i just drop the house down the blocks and then i've got the the sleeves in my holes to help insulate and keep the draft from coming up but uh, i i don't typically drop the house all the way down under the ice we set it on blocks and then a lot of guys obviously you know they'll pack around it yeah. if i i don't typically set the house down in one spot that long but uh you know i just set it down and then put the sleeves in and call it call it a day there yep, yep. so and that, that generally make things a lot easier for you if, if that's your style of doing things but that that breaking it free was is more for the guy that's going to go park it out somewhere for a week and yep. and then you know just in case you got some got some weather melt off or rain or whatever it may be but uh yeah and the other thing that you brought up was having that jump box with you and that's kind of brings me to another point too if if you're a new owner um, a lot of times you'll you'll back that house into wherever you're gonna start fishing and a lot of times guys will just leave it plugged into the truck and if you have a problem that's just gonna make that problem worse so make sure that when you when you get into wherever you're gonna fish unplug the truck right away because if the battery in your house drains down it's gonna start draining that battery in your truck and that could cause you some major problems so make sure whenever you get to wherever you're fishing you pull that plug and then if the battery in the house dies you, you can at least get your truck started yep i mean that that's that is a super common thing i mean i don't know how many times a year we run into people out on the lake that their truck won't start they just spent the night out on the lake and now their truck won't start and it was and it's just something simple like that unplugging unplugging the trailer from from the truck and making sure all the, the dome lights and everything are off and having a jump box just helps you know another uh, another one of those backup plans they're fairly reasonable priced i mean you can get them for less than 100 bucks the real small ones you're really just looking for something to get you get you going that one time so you can get home and like i said you, you they're they're easy easy to haul around they don't don't take up much space but they can save a lot of headache yeah so we go back in the house um 
you know we, we've got a great furnace in here it keeps it really comfortable to fish in but one of the things that i like to do when i'm in the house is take my shoes off and when it's zero degrees out even though we've got the furnace going on a lot of times the floor can be cold so i would shack always slippers. say what's that shack slippers yeah shack slippers rugs rugs are nice too um you know i know some people have carpeted houses but most people don't like the carpet on the house um so just bring a couple rugs along so you can put your feet on something warm but shack slippers and uh, everyone's all-time favorite is a set of crocs you know if if you if you get a, a flag or something that pops up outside you want to be able to get to it quickly and you got your boots off you need something to slide on and go out and pull your flag so so you need those kind of things too just to, to keep everything warm exactly and some storage solutions as well uh, the other thing that can happen I see it happen a lot because I'm a gear guy and bring tons of stuff with me wherever I go but uh, bring some storage totes just so you can keep everything organized because it doesn't take long you know you go and buy these things and you look inside them when they're new and they look huge but you start putting a couple guys in it and if you bring a dog and whatever the family um, you start bringing all that gear and they fill up really really quick so having uh, some storage and having uh, places for everything so that you don't have to look through every single tote that you have I actually put duct tape on the side of my totes and literally write out everything that's on them that's in them so when I need something all I got to do is look at the outside and I know what's in that tote so uh, storage totes are really important um, for some of your bigger stuff that maybe it doesn't matter if it stays warm or cold you can leave those in the truck but otherwise have stuff that can fit inside of your house in, in wherever you need to put it well and and that um, that takes me back to my point of the portable house that I bring for my restroom I actually will you know you don't need a whole lot of room for that five gallon bucket in a toilet seat so usually what i'll do is i'll put some some of them totes inside that shack mm -hmm. um, to keep them out of the elements a little bit obviously the stuff that you're putting directly on the ice um, if you don't have a floor in your portable shack you you don't want to put stuff that isn't gonna get cold but um that's another great option to keep those totes yeah out of the weather and you talked about that beer being such an important accessory to have on the ice um, sometimes you only have so much room for that as well so oftentimes we use coolers not to keep stuff cold but to keep stuff from freezing up outside too I mean, it works just as well exactly <laughs> You need a place to steer to store your beer before you put it in the refrigerator or anything else that that you need that um, is liquid is is just having a place to put that stuff as well. So uh, those big coolers, uh, I've got a couple of big mammoth coolers. Uh, they can come in handy as well. Yep, and then, you know, and then then you know, as we kind of knock down the list of things, some other things that you can really think about is you know different types of bait bait wells. Um, if you're planning on spending some time, you want to make sure you get something with the aerator um, system on it to keep your minnows alive for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and then fish wells. I don't know. Some people don't mind throwing their fish out on the ice, let them freeze. Um, me personally, once I get in the shack, I want to stay in the shack, keep the heat in the shack, unless it's a really nice day out. I mean, obviously there's an exception, but um, and I don't want my fish flopping all over so everyone and their mom doesn't come and set up right by my house. Mm -hmm. So um, I use one of those. Uh, you, you stick it in your hole and it just floats on top of the hole, and you throw your fish in there keeps them nice and fresh if you want to bleed them out you can bleed them out whatever however you want to do it but doing that is number one you're not going to get them to freeze in your bucket usually you know you're going to be moving that thing and, and shifting it around so it does those fish don't freeze into the hole but it keeps them fresh keeps them limber and and uh it's something that a lot of people don't really think about i mean it's an easy fix just throw your fish in a five gallon bucket whatever but i really like those those in the hole type of fish um ice wells is is what they're called i believe yeah and then i get to go back to my caddy shack days when i throw the fish and i go it's in the hole <laughs> that was terrible <laughs> I, know, I know but once you said in the hole that was the first thing that came to mind it was caddy shack but uh you know I, I think we've we've gone through just about everything that, that we could think of you know and if someone out there thinks of something else they can always reach out give us more ideas for more shows for sure 
we're not quitting this, are we? Uh oh, I don't plan on it. All right, so we've got a lot more shows to go through. If you've got something that uh, you love to have in your fish house and feel like it's a necessity, go ahead and uh, you know leave a comment or whatever, and let us know what what you think. You know, a lot of people love the pizzazz ovens too. You got to have a, a nice place to cook a perfect pizza, and pizzazz isn't just for pizza anymore. I'm not sponsored by Presto. What, where are you? But going? Presto, reach out. Maybe we could make a deal. That sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody need, needs a, a good place to cook cook that pizza. So exactly. People dig dig the Presto oven. It's a it's a, oh I just thought of something. Coffee. Yep, everyone. You definitely need coffee, especially if you're going to drink that case of beer in one night. Yeah, exactly. The next morning, you're going to need the coffee. So, so think of either a coffee maker. Um, you know, again, with a coffee maker, typically it's something you need to plug in. A lot of times, it's something that draws a lot of power to heat that. So, a lot of guys just like to boil water, and they'll have the instant. The Starbucks instant stuff is awesome. Um, I know it's toity. Jeez, Tom, Steve Ranella takes it wherever he goes. And I mean, they'll be up in the Alaskan bush drinking Starbucks, and I was amazed at how great it was. A couple guys uh, I, don't I went fishing with about a year ago introduced me to the, the instant Starbucks, and it, it is really good. I don't know if my wife would ever be able to look at me the same if I'm drinking instant Starbucks while it's, I'm fishing. It's the best instant coffee you'll ever drink. The other thing, and if you think the Starbucks is hoity-toity, but the French press coffee, it's it works great for a fish house because all you need is the boiled water you put in the French press. It comes out with some awesome coffee. So think about that as well. It doesn't draw down any power, but uh, gives you some delicious coffee. I mean, really, if you're going to start talking about coffee and going back to the cooking, something, you know, if you ever want ideas for what you'll need while you're in your shack it's never a bad idea just to go walk through the camping section mm -hmm. and take a look at some of those a lot of that stuff is will work great in your ice shack during the winter time um, there's all sorts of different types of camping style coffee makers there's waffle percolators there, i mean you name it they got the old it. school yeah so that, that's actually a grand idea and i i actually did that uh, a couple weeks ago i was walking around i'm like i'm gonna go through the camping section just see if there's anything i need for the fish house it is a, it's a great idea and it's a lot of the stuff crosses over here to this world as well so anything else you got that's all i got for you guys today all right guys <laughs> thanks for watching thanks for listening and we'll talk to you next time